Hello everyone, this is Dev Jyoti and I'm here today with a tutorial on implementing a DC GAN from scratch in PyTorch. The introduction of GANs really has revolutionized the sphere of machine learning and I feel especially lucky to have the opportunity to guide you through a very successful extrapolation of GANs, which are DC GANs. Now just a quick recap of the concept of GANs. There are two neural networks working together, the generator and the discriminator. The intention is to train the generator in such a way that it will create images which the discriminator will classify as images belonging to the input data set. Using the classic forger detective example, the forger, which is the generator, has to forge an image such that the detective, which is the discriminator, believes it belongs to his own collection of images. Here's a prime example of the power of GANs. Each time you load this page, you'll get a face which in all probability doesn't exist in the world. This uses a concept of GANs called style GAN, which was developed by NVIDIA. Moving on, what is a DC GAN? A DC GAN, or Deep Convolutional Generative Adversarial Networks, are an upgrade to vanilla GANs, based on several findings that the authors of the DC GANs have found during their research. The detailed version of these findings can be found in the DC GAN paper, but a basic rundown is that the authors have used fractionally styled convolutional layers, or transport convolution, to replace the fully connected layers of a vanilla GANs generator. For a complete and proper tutorial on fractionally strided convolution, I recommend following Sebastian Raska's tutorial on this. It's really good and clears all your doubts. But for now, just think of it as upsampling with learnable parameters in place of non-trainable pooling layers. For the discriminator's case, we'll just be using strided convolutions in the place of the FC layers. There's also mentions of using batch normalization, ReLU activations, and leaky ReLU activation function. The batch normalization is said to ensure proper flow of gradients throughout the architecture. With that out of the way, let's move on to the directory. The directory is relatively small, with only two primary scripts. The dcgan.py script, which houses the architecture and dcgan mnist.py script, with containing the training inference or visualization. So the first thing we do here is create the generator class. In the constructor function, we have input dimensions, output dimensions, and output channels as arguments. The pattern we are following here is transpose convolution followed by a ReLU activation function and a batch normalization. We repeat it thrice and then end it with another transpose convolution followed by a tan H layer. Since the pattern is already complete in the forward pass, we just set it up as it is. Moving on to the discriminator, the constructor arguments are depth, which determines the number of channels of the input image, and alpha the value given to the leaky ReLU functions used in the architecture. Now in the architecture, we'll be using normal strided convolutions. In the generator, we are generating an image from random noise input. In the discriminator, we are getting a true or false value from the input image. So the architecture is quite simple. We have a set of convolutions followed by a leaky ReLU pattern, two fully connected layers, and a sigmoid layer to bound the output to one and zero. We simply set this pattern up in the forward pass too. With that, the architecture is complete. Now let's set it up to see it in action. Here, the first thing we see is an implementation of the custom weight in initialization that the authors deemed best for our DC GAN training, a different mean and standard deviation for the convolution layers and the batch norm layers. Here, we have a simple set of CLI arguments to allow the user to choose some arguments in case they want to try out with their own data set or change hyperparameters, etc. We set the epochs and batch size as the argument input. Of course, while training GANs, you would want to use GPUs. So we set the device to GPU. The PyTorch data transform will convert the dataset into tensors and normalize it without much hassle. Thankfully, due to TorchVision hosting several datasets, you can easily boot up. We use it to get the MNIST dataset. The training and test data are then concatenated and passed to a PyTorch data loader instance. This automatically takes care of passing the data in batches and concludes our input data pipeline. Our next task is simply to initialize the generator and discriminator using the custom weight in initializing function and load these models to our device. For our optimizer, we choose Adam with specified initial decays and a weight decay based on epochs. Since at heart it's a binary classification problem, we choose binary cross entropy as the loss. After initializing the labels, we start looping over the epochs. First thing we do inside the loop is initialize the losses and start get grabbing data from the data loader. The first thing we do after getting our data is to feed the real images to the discriminator and train it accordingly. 
Next, we produce fake images using the generator and train the discriminator to identify fake images. Now, we'll train the generator by labeling all its produced images as real and feeding it to the discriminator, then calculating the loss and determining how far the generated images are from being considered real. Now, let's see how the generated images change over time. Notice how by the end of 20 epochs, the generator has already produced images which look like they have been plucked right out of the MNIST dataset. This is just a little display of the power of DCGANs. You can try with your own data and tinker around with the hyperparameters to see how well the DCGANs fare with other datasets too, and you'll see the same thing. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, and I hope this served as a good starting point in your journey to discover more about GANs. Thank you.